Hello and welcome to today's video. So this time we're going to be reviewing a few recent publications and uh, some slightly older but still classic books that you might want to consider as gifts for the paperback or book lover in your life. Uh, coming up to the gift giving season and uh, certainly there's some beautiful books here that would make fantastic presents. So sit back, relax and let's get to it. Okay, so the first book we're going to have a look at is one called The Hooded Gunman. Now, this is a look at the original hardback, and there's a little bit on the paperback uh, original publications from the Collins Crime Club it's in the UK. So Collins published all manner of uh, uh, classic crime, including many, many uh, sort of Agatha Christie titles. In fact, there they are. These are the very earliest jackets. And um, this fantastic book, um, it just goes through them. Uh, in chronological order, right from the 30s up to the uh, the 80s. And if you're a fan of these fantastic jackets, well, there's a lot here to love, isn't there? So as I said, it's broken down into decades. There's just so much stuff here to go through. Some very, very good stuff, some classic crime. As you can see, lots and lots in here for you to enjoy. I absolutely love this book. Um, it's been out a couple of years, but it's uh, it's fantastic. Really nice hardback. It's the perfect sort of gift that you might want to give someone at Christmas for a birthday present. And uh, it comes highly, highly recommended. There we are. There's like a little synopsis of each book as well when it came out. So that is The Hood of Gunman. That's a great, great great tome. So that's the first book we're looking at. Next we've got something a little bit different. So these are from the uh, men's adventure magazine genre and these are published by uh, a chap in America called uh, Robert Dice and Wyatt Doyle and they look at different aspects of the classic American men's adventure magazines and um, I was lucky enough to uh, be sent a few of these by Bob earlier in the year and I absolutely loved them. The very first one I read was this and it was just, uh, I seem to remember hearing about it on the Paperback Warrior uh, podcast where they'd had a copy of um, I Watched Them Eat Me Alive which is uh, absolutely fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Although it's quite funny, it's such good fun. Um, and uh, you can see where they've, um, these are some of the original sort of covers to these these magazines that came out in the 50s, 60s and, and 70s. And they were quite sensationalist. And this particular um, issue does look at the uh, people who are being eaten alive, as it says, buried alive, eaten alive. Um, the stories are actually really good fun and um, it's just the perfect sort of thing to sort of dip in and out of. So there was this one, which I very much enjoyed. And then there was a look at the, this one's a book at the, look at the art of Samson Pollan, uh, one of the uh, the great artists from that era. This is a beautifully produced book, absolutely lovely. Um, there is the Men's Adventure Library. So there's about a dozen titles or so in the series. Some great, uh, great artwork in here for you to enjoy. And this is more like a sumptuous sort of you know, Christmas present, as it were. This one here looks at the art of Gil Cohen. Another really, really nice uh, hardback. Yeah, famous for the uh, the Executioner novels. A lot of these are the original cover paintings that have been pulled together. Fantastic stuff there. If you're a fan of the uh, that series, you absolutely have to own own that one. And here's uh, one other that I pulled from my collection, which is uh, uh, specifically uh, stories in and based in and around Cuba and Fidel Castro. This one's in the in same form as I watched Make Me Alive, but it's uh, actually a, a more permanent hardback form, and it's slightly expanded, I believe. Um, but once again, great, great stuff. Uh, they really are these. They're just I had no idea that this sort of genre even existed because we rarely saw them over here in the UK, and I was a bit too young to see them on the shelf. But um, seeing them now, they're, they're great and they're full of some really great stories, which I think anyone will enjoy. So uh, I can very much recommend the books from the Men's Adventure Library. And as I said, there's about a dozen or so on varying subjects. And um, I shall put, of course, links to them all in the descriptions down below so we can have a, have a good look at them. 
Next, we've got the latest publication from the Penguin Collectors Society. Now, this uh, the Penguin Collectors Society, they publish two uh, magazines a year, and they also publish one sort of well, special publication, and this time it's an updated hardback, and it's the companion to the study of Penguin Books. Um, and this has been uh, is perfect for someone just uh, getting into uh, learning about the history of, of Penguin and everything that they did over their massive history. And it covers Penguin, Puffins, all the plays, Pelicans, Penguin specials, the main series, anniversaries. There's an awful lot in here to enjoy, certain illustrators. And, it's, and it is the perfect introduction to uh, to Penguin books in general. Um, there is a Penguin Collector Society, which if you are interested in Penguin, I would very much recommend you search out. Once again, there'll be a link in the description down below. And uh, it's been going well, since the early 70s now. Very well established. And as I said, each year they publish uh, like a special publication. And that was this year's selection, The Companion to Penguin Books. Next, something completely different, taking it off on a different tact, which was Paperbacks from Hell by Brady Hendrix. Now, uh, this book, in effect, it's been out, uh, I think, two or three years now. I did buy it when it came out. Um, in effect, this has become almost like a bible for horror collectors and these are the books that you know i certainly remember a lot of these although the british equivalents not always the american ones that were published and they had sort of garish titles like one word ones like um like spawn or uh, incubus and things like this you know um, and i was a young 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 impressionable chap growing up at the time and you know the nearest thing we had in the uk was like the New England Library titles, the James Herberts, the Rats, the Lair, Fog, that sort of thing. But these other ones weren't quite perhaps as well written, but boy, oh boy, did they pack a punch. And this is a book full of those. And uh, believe me, every time I go through and read something in here, because it's really nicely broken down, I, I, I find myself heading to eBay looking to buy them because um, there's just so much uh, good stuff in here to enjoy. As you can see, beautifully illustrated throughout um, really great text more so than you might find on um, on other on other books I did just spot the uh, the necroscope the series was that necroscope by Brian Lumley. I'm sure they were there but um, absolutely fantastic series I really like the necroscope books but as you can see there's there's stacks in here for you to get your, your teeth stuck into as it were <laughs> so some good stuff This is paperbacks from hell. It's great, great stuff. Really, uh, really recommended that one. That's by Grady Hendrix. Next, we've got this one. This is another book that's been out for a couple of years, but um, highly recommended. And this is uh, Tom Adams uncovered. Tom Adams was the artist who did a lot of the 19, late 60s, 70s and early 80s Agatha Christie jackets. And what he did, he took these uh, classic, really cosy crime novels of the of the 30s to 70s and he put his own gothic style on them and uh, they really are fantastic and it made the Christie's massive bestsellers in the 1970s and uh, late 60s and these were the editions I remember reading as a kid because my mum had a whole load of them and uh, these and the the Pam book editions uh, it's like at Bertram's hotel there I just see some mirror crack from side to side um, some great stuff here as you can see and so he just takes a classic novel and puts his own sort of gothic macabre twist on it. And the, and the jackets are real, real works of art. It's my, uh, one of my favourites, this one here. I think that's for um, a Caribbean mystery. But my all-time favourite of his, I don't know if we'll see it, is called uh, Destination Unknown. It's more like a Salvador Dali, Salvador Dali-esque sort of psychedelic cover. That's my sort of favourite one of his they did. But as you can see, fantastic stuff. That's probably the most famous one there. Death in the Clouds with the great hornet, I think it is, or a wasp on the front. Good stuff, eh? Recommended. Another really nice lavish hardback, which would make a great present. This one here, just published. 
This is called Cover Me, the Vintage Art Pan Books by Colin Larkin. Uh, Colin owns a collection of about 600 original pan artworks that he bought direct from the publisher back in the 1980s. Um, this one, as I said, it's brand new, uh, just got full of fantastic original pan cover art, enough to make you drool. And uh, uh, it's just fantastic. It's all been pulled together and uh, it looks, it's just great. A really uh, decent accompanying text as well, full of detail. I think if you're a fan of pan books or if you just like vintage paperbacks in general, um, you're going to really love it. Certainly um, special sections on some of the bigger artists like Hans Helwig and um, uh, Sam Peffer. It's great stuff, as you can see. It's just brilliant. I have done a separate review of this because I think it's just so, so good. As I said, it's only just come out, so um, copies should be available from your favourite retailer online. Now, the last thing to look at is some of the more up-to-date um, uh, fanzines. Now, I call them fanzines, but these are sometimes beyond that. They're, uh, I mean, these are just great, absolutely great stuff. So I can recommend, first of all, the latest issue of Paperback Parade, number 108. This is from uh, Gary Lavisi over in the States. Um, if you've not checked out Gary's paperback channel, he has one here on YouTube. Um, it's fantastic stuff. The cover, incidentally, is Agatha Christie in Vintage Pan Books written by me no less so uh i've got to got to recommend this issue haven't i uh, in particular um so yeah it does look at the uh, this one does look at um uh, all the Axe christie's in vintage pan book as well as a few other articles as well some uh pan uh hammer movie tie-ins there's the Axe christie's loads of illustrations so it's a good one for that so that's Paperback Parade. Then we've got the latest issues uh, from Justin Marriott. So there's a few here. So we've got the latest issue of The Sleazy Reader, <laughs> issue number seven. Uh, it was it wasn't it was new to me. This is one that I missed, although it did come out in uh, February 20, 2017. But it's one I, I didn't actually have, so I wanted to obviously get this one. Then we've got this is more recent. So this is the latest issue of the Paperback Fanatic. Lockdown special, viruses in paperback, the story of, dis of the disaster novel genre, convicts turned author reviews. There we are. So it gives you the uh, look at it. This has uh, got some great stuff in here. Some Guy and Smith I spotted there. And this is much more up to date. As in it was recently published. And then uh, his latest special is the Pulp Horror special. All reviews again, 130 horror reviews of classic horror paperbacks. There's some magazines and comics in there as well. And I know Justin's got a, uh, an all war special coming up, which I've got a couple of bits lined up to write over Christmas. So looking forward to that as well. This is like a uh, all pulpy horror special, that one. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that look through these books, which I think would make fantastic presents for the paperback lover in your life. Uh, certainly some great stuff in here. You may want to just treat yourself with a few Amazon vouchers or something like that, if that's what you end up getting. Um, I will put links to all of this in the descriptions down below. Most of it is available from Amazon. Um, you can get some of it on eBay. Um, some of it I'll direct you to exactly to the original publisher's websites if you want to support them directly. Uh, but there we are. Yeah, I hope you found some good stuff in here to enjoy. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please consider subscribing for regular vintage book content and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.